Hi, I'm Dixie and I have been sewing historical costumes for about eight years now, and in that time I have made several corsets from various eras. And while I wouldn't consider myself an expert at corset making, I do have several years experience designing sewing patterns, drafting patterns, and writing pattern instructions. So in this video, I want to talk about what I think are the best commercially available patterns that a beginner could use to make their own historical corsets or stays. I'm gonna be covering the 18th century through the early 20th century. Now, in no way do I think that corsets are a beginner project or a good first historical sewing project. I definitely recommend you do some other smaller projects like start with shifts and petticoats and accessories, but if you think you're ready to make the jump into more complex foundational garments, I hope this video helps. But first, here are some factors that help me choose my picks. I'm also only including multi-size patterns because I don't think it's fair to expect a newbie to know how to grade a pattern up or down to their size. And I'm taking size range into consideration because I feel much better about recommending a pattern that is more size inclusive than not. And to be really honest, I don't love the big four patterns that you can buy at your big box craft stores for beginners. Their instructions are nowhere near as detailed as patterns from indie companies, and the instructions are often for modern construction, which can be okay sometimes, but not always. And sometimes sizing can be way off because the people grading the patterns or changing the sizes up and down do so for modern sizing, which historical dress is not sized the same. And their size range is generally lacking. They usually max out at a 44 inch bust, which I feel is unacceptable for a commercial pattern. Stays as a separate garment from a structured bodice started becoming a thing in the late 17th century, but honestly, I know of no in print commercially available multi-size patterns for that era. Although you could adapt some 18th century stays to work. So let's start with the 18th century. Up until about 1770, you could make just about any conically shaped set of stays work. This style is very flat in the front and angles down to the waist with tabs over the hips. I've got two picks for this era and each have their pros and cons. They're similarly priced for the paper versions, but the red threaded stays come in a downloadable PDF option. Unfortunately though, they both only have like one size per pack but their sizes both go up to at least 50 inches for the bust. The Larkin and Smith stays are fully boned, but they don't have straps and they're front and back lacing, which makes for faster dressing. The red threaded stays are half boned, so quicker to sew, but they lace in the back and have straps. So it's really about the style you want to go with. If you're looking for something more budget friendly, American Duchess made a stays pattern with simplicity that's popular. I know a lot of people have used it. Uh, American Duchess does have some tips on their blog and YouTube channel for this pattern. So if you do want to use that pattern, I suggest you check out American Duchess's helpful tips so you can get the fit just right. Starting in the 1770s, a slightly different torso shape came into fashion. This style is more curvy in front, allowing for a slightly more natural bust shape. They're also shorter in the waist than the earlier style. My hands down winner is the Augusta Stays. These stays have been thoroughly tested. They come with excellent instructions and a fit guide. They have two different cuts for curvy or straight figures. They are well researched and go up to a 52 inch bust. However, they are fully boned, which takes more time and materials to make. And they are back lacing, which can take longer to get dressed. So as a runner up, we have the red threaded 1780 stays, which I've made and I like them. They are half boned, so they're faster to make and front lacing, so they're faster to get dressed, but they are more expensive and they only come in one size per pack, whereas the Augusta comes in, I think, four sizes per pack. I'm skipping over the transitional period of the late 1790s because there is so much variation in style and a good pair of standard Regency stays can get you through the 1790s all the way through the 1830s. There are several patterns out there for the typical corded stays of this period, but my no-brainer pick is Laughing Moon 115. 
This pattern is a great value. It comes with not only short and long versions of the stays with historical and theatrical construction options, but it also comes with a shift pattern as well. I have made these, the instructions are solid, the sizing goes up to a bust of 62 inches, and all the sizes are in one pack. Unfortunately, Laughing Moon is no longer printing paper versions of their patterns anymore, but you may be able to track down a copy on eBay or Etsy. Otherwise, it's download only. So the term Victorian spans over 60 years, and there are a lot of subtle changes that happen to corsets during this time. They get shorter, they get longer, they get curvier. However, when you're just starting out, a basic, good-fitting Victorian corset can cover most decades. My tried and true pick is the Laughing Moon 100, the Door and Silverado corsets. This has been a top pick for people for decades as these patterns are fairly simple to construct but easy to modify. The design is basic enough, which is why it can span such a wide period of time. And this was the first ever corset pattern that I made. The instructions are good. Again, sizing goes up to 62 inches in the bust. However, be sure to check out Truly Victorian's write-up on how to pick a bust cup size because the instructions and the pattern can make you think that you need to cut a much larger size than you actually do. As an alternative for an early Victorian corset, I've made Black Snail's corset from this pattern. And if you want an even cheaper option for a later Victorian corset, the Aranea Black Dahlia Riding Corset is free and it goes up to a 59 inch bust. And even though it's free, it has very thorough instructions. Seriously, if you use this, you should drop her a few bucks as a thank you. The shape of corsets shifts around 1900 into the S bend or straight front style. The front of the corset doesn't bend inward toward the waist and from the side you get a silhouette where the bust is pushed forward and the bum is pushed back. I have a few picks for this depending on what you need. The truly Victorian 1903 corset is a great historical shape. It also includes patterns for bust improvers and a small bum pad. It comes in three heights, over bust, mid bust, and under bust, and has multiple cuff sizes, and goes up to 58 inches in the bust, but the construction is more complicated than some other options. Black Snail also makes an Edwardian corset pattern that is a simpler design with no bust gores, so it's easier to fit and sew. This one goes up to a 53 inch bust. And again, if you're on a budget, Aranea Black has a pattern that is free, no gores based on a historic pattern and goes up to a 56 inch bust, but it is PDF only and you have to add your own seam allowances. So that is a little bit extra work. This is the last major era of the true corset and was later replaced by more elastic shapewear. The clear winner here is the Scroop Rilla corset. Scroop is a gem in the historical pattern landscape. They do extensive testing. They have some of the best instructions out there and they go above and beyond other companies to offer things like fit guides and again, two different cuts, straight and curvy. But this one is PDF only. It goes up to 56 inches in the hips, which I say hips because this is an underbust corset, which is very common for this era. If you are a small busted person with a good fitting chemise, you probably don't need any other kind of bust support. The bust line of this era was much more natural than it is today. It was lower and kind of a softer line. This corset gives a slight amount of lift, so your bust just doesn't slide down to your waist, and the chemise keeps the bust contained. However, if you have a large bust, you might want to either make a separate brassiere or there's the Truly Victorian 1913 corset, which has both an underbust and a midbust option for people who need that bust support and don't wanna make a secondary garment. It's available in both PDF and printed and goes up to a 58 inch bust with multiple cup sizes. All of these patterns will be linked in the description below. And with any corset, you always wanna make a mock-up, possibly multiple mock-ups. Luckily, there are tons of helpful videos and resources out there on the internet to help you make your own historical foundation garments. Thank you for watching. If you like historical sewing videos, please subscribe to this channel. And until next time, happy sewing.